Hey everyone, I'm Hamilton, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert your text to images with AI for free and with no coding knowledge required. So I think that, you know, in the past few years, one of the coolest advancements we've made with AI is the ability to use it to create image outputs that actually look good, that could be, you know, art worthy. And then in the past year, I think one of the coolest things that's been output is the ability to input text and then convert that into actual images that still look good. This is like with things like Dolly 2, um, with Google's Imogen, things like that, that really change how we think about like what is art, who is an artist, what do we label these things if you know an AI can actually produce the art. But for this video, I really want to focus on how you can kind of get started in this space and do it quickly, for free, and with no technology or coding requirements really. So let's get started with text image with AI. Okay, so to talk about this, um, first I'm going to describe like what text to image is, because I think this is going to give us some good context um, to really understand what it's doing and how best to use this tool to get the results we want. Then I'm going to be doing a demo of how to actually create this text to image. And then finally, I'll leave you off with some pointers to kind of direct further exploration and things that I found have been effective in, in learning about uh, this space. Okay, so what is text to image? So basically the way this works is that there's this AI and it's been trained on like a bajillion images. So basically any images that are available on the internet and that are like in the public domain has been pushed into this AI along with descriptions about like what is in them, um, what are captions around them, like what do we think is happening in them, things like that. And this constitutes like all the knowledge that this AI has about the world. And now what we can do with this is we can write some text that describes an image and we give it to this AI. And the AI is basically going to be like, well, I'm going to try to produce an image that best matches this text that you put in based on all the knowledge that I have of, you know, images and stuff that I've been trained. And that's how we get this output image. Um, all these output images that I'm using, for an example, are part of my new AI art project called Artificial Dreams, which I'll have a link to in the bottom if you're interested. So that's how it works from a high level, but I think there's also one other thing that we should talk about to really help you get the most out of this technology. So there's this idea called diffusion, which is kind of happening internally to the AI, but it really gives this technology a lot of power. And what it allows to happen is that you can create a bunch of different outputs from a single input. So an example of this is like if we give you that same text and then we add this kind of random seed, which is just like a big number, then let's say that the random seed is one, we could get this top image or two can get this bottom image. And this is a common design that we see in a lot of generative art um, paradigms because it really allows you to leverage the ability of the technology to produce many different outputs because those outputs are actually vastly different, which creates a very large opportunity space for the images that you're going to be producing. So just something to know, and we'll touch on this a little bit later um, in the form of random seed, um, but this should give us a good overview of kind of how this is working and how our inputs are gonna change it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to a demo um, for how to actually create your text image. To do this, I'm gonna be relying on a service called Night Cafe Studio, which kind of wraps this AI implementation so that it's really easy for you to use. So I think there's a lot of pros here. Um, it's free, uh, gives you 10 credits start, five extra per day, has really high quality image outputs. I think it's one of the best, if not the best um, quality outputs I've seen for something that's widely available like this. It's stable and fast. I've been using it a lot. Um, I know a lot of other people that are using it a lot and most images come out in about 30 seconds um, and I've never seen it crash on me, um, which is pretty impressive for something that's kind of like a fringe service like this. And it has really, really great features um, to allow you to make changes that will actually be effective in changing the AI's outputs, but it hides a lot of the mathy stuff that we don't really need when we're just trying to produce images. The really only con I see to this service based on the other widely available services here is that it's just not as good as Dolly 2, but it doesn't really matter because unless you're famous, you're not gonna get access to Dolly 2, so we kind of just gotta work with what we got. So with that said, an um, explanation of why we're using it, uh, let's jump over to the demo. Okay, so if you just Google Night Cafe Studio, uh, it should come up here. So you just click on that, and then you can just click on Start Creating to start. I've already logged in, created my stuff. So this is the basic 
create page um, that you start at. I think we should use the uh, stable model. I anecdotally have seen that this produces the best um, quality results for me, but you could also explore the other ones um, at some point as well. So let's just click in here and then let's give it a text prompt. So I've been playing around with uh, a vending machine on Mars for a bit and my practice for this video. So I'm gonna continue with that as well. Um, you can choose a style if you want. I'm just gonna oil painting and let's go ahead and start it. So this is gonna cue this um, job and we're just gonna wait a few seconds and then we'll kind of come back uh, when it finishes. Okay, so this one finished in about 10 seconds and you can see that it created a vending machine that looks on Mars. Um, while I was practicing this video, I created a few other different ones. And you can see that these are all vending machines on Mars, but they are all pretty different in, in the way that they look. And so I think this is a great example of that diffusion principle in practice. Um, the way that this is happening internally is that they're using a different random seed, which is something you can also configure and I'll talk about in a second. But with this, if you've created your prompt and it's generated, then you've now created your first art generation with AI. So congratulations. So with that, you're in a good position to keep creating whatever you want, but I do want to kind of offer a few tips for further things you can explore that I've seen be effective in leveraging this technology. So the first tip or area to explore is to try different styles and permutations. So I found that little changes in the words that you're using to describe something can produce like very different results. So in this example, I'm saying, you know, feasting in virtual reality, versus eating in virtual reality might give you one with like more people or one that's more focused on food. Um, another example of this might be like uh, someone wearing a hat versus someone with a hat might give you very different kinds of pictures depending on what you're doing. Um, the other part is the trying these different styles. So the oil painting style is the you know default here, um, but you can also try other things like 3D, which will make it look more like a video game or metaverse, virtual reality, kind of whatever you're going for. The second thing I'd say you should explore is these advanced options. So on the create page, there is a toggle that will allow you to see kind of these other fields that are being fed into the AI every time you run it. Um, so some ones that I would recommend looking at are the modifiers um, and you can kind of see how all these styles are, are created internally. Um, you can also throw in new ones like 4k, 8k, art station, um, things like that. Um, and you can kind of see all the, the favorite ones that people are using um, from that page. You have access to this random seed, which is how we're actually getting those different outputs via diffusion. Um, so check that out uh, if you want to kind of play around with it. You can use prompt weight, which will do a little bit about like how much is the AI trying to match the exact input you put in versus like making a little bit more random. Um, and finally, you can play around with the runtime, which is basically like how much do you want the AI to be thinking about how to do this matching. All of these can produce like different kinds of results. So useful levers to pull in in your exploration. Now, finally, I wanted to call out, this is like a very new area and um, we're still kind of like developing the technology and still trying to figure out like how best to use it. So I think one cool thing that you can do here is there's an explore page and you can kind of explore what everyone is building um, and also all the settings that were used to produce it, whether it's like the different modifiers they used or you know different prompt weight or whatever that is. And so this is a good way to see something that you like and then try to um, reproduce something similar uh, in your own work. So with that, we'll start finishing up the video. If you have any questions about producing AI or um, building with art and technology, let me know. And I'll try to answer some of them. I'll probably be doing a video on how to produce like art worthy um, outputs from this system and how you can kind of clean it up and make them higher resolution and stuff. Um, so let me know if you're interested in that or if there's anything you'd like to see included in there. And finally, if you wanna learn more about Artificial Dreams, which is my latest AI project, I'll have a link to that in the bottom of this video. So I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.